Okay, so this is take three. Digital to analog and analog to digital converters. So this is particularly relevant for people maybe studying for the foundation exam in, in the UK, but for anybody mildly interested in digital to analog and analog to digital. So we've been doing a lot of waveforms on the channel recently. That's typical sine wave. Because when we speak, and I can show that to you, it's like a little presentation here. I hit the record button. One, two, one, two, and hit stop. We can zoom into this and you will see the bit depth. Look at that, all these little dots in there because that has digitized my voice. So let's do that in detail. We've got, and I've found this page here, it's pretty good, nice little chart here. We have sample rate and bit depth. So the sample rate, let's say we want to sample this like this. We just sample it, right? Off we go sampling. Then the bit depth is how many, how accurate you want the amplitude to, to measure at. Effectively, we were at zero there. This one goes there. This one goes there. There's a negative here at the base. And that means we can then create a data stream if we know the speed running out here. We know the speed that this data set is coming at and we understand the bit depth and that's called the sample rate along the x-axis and it's called the bit depth going up the the y-axis so you've got this voltage coming in all right because that's what it is when i talk into this microphone here it creates a little bit of voltage goes into the computer and it does exactly this now, for interest, I found something else rather interesting. This is this link here, and I'll try and remember to put that in the description as well. It says here, we'll zoom in a bit, CDs are sampled with a bit rate of 16 bits, which gives us 65,536 possible amplitude. So there's a hell of a lot of vertical possibilities, all right? 65,000 of them before it clips. And that's quite interesting. So clipping, by the way, just before we move on, is if you take a sine wave and and the maximum allowable on your 65 odd thousand amplitude value, then it'll just be the top. You, your waveform will look like that and down again. And you get something called clipping happening here. The clipping doesn't sound very nice. I actually oft often have it on this blooming channel and <laughs> it plagues me all the time because the waveform is stopped suddenly and you get, it just sounds nasty. All right, so where were we? Right now, so we've got this bit depth and then we've got the, the sample rate, but some interesting problems can occur if we get it wrong. And I found this one as well. So here's the sample rate. And here's our bit depth. But if our sample rate and bit depth, particularly sample rate, is incorrect, it's possible to take a wavelength or a, a sample that looks like this. But when we reconstruct it, because we've got the wrong sample rate or bit depth, it's possible when you reconstruct it, it can look very odd and it can sound a bit strange. A CD has 16, it's 16 bit and a sample rate of, I think, of 44,000. That's a hell of a lot. That means not only have we got 65,000 going in that direction, we've also got 44,400 or something samples coming along here every second. And that means, so that's what we've got. We've now got a data stream. We've now got a bunch of numbers in digital talk. And that means that when we get the numbers coming back down the data stream, all these, you know, bits, ones and zeros, it allows us to reconstruct what the waveform is going to look like, why it's important we get bit depth and sample rates correct, so we don't end up with strange looking sine waves and stuff like this. Now, when we, when we, at the end of this series, we're going to actually go through the syllabus and I'll show you how simple it is. I think you'll find we've covered everything when it comes to digital and analog and analog to digital, and that's all it is but we will cover 
some of the questions that are probably going to be asked. It'll be one question out of 26 or something. And it's just to show your understanding. And frankly, if you've watched this video, you'll get that one right. OK. All right. So what is next coming up in the series of the Foundation series? Um, I'm going to skip over uh, transmitters and receivers. And I'll tell you why. Because the only thing you need to learn are these block diagrams. Obviously, read this. All right and understand the block diagrams because it's really only the block diagram that's tested for you have to remember if you're um learning to take an amateur radio license it's an amateur radio license not a professional radio license you're not doing a physics degree the bodies in play here are just making sure that you're safe you know what you're doing and you're not going to hurt anybody and you're not going to cause interference because it's a lifelong experience right it's enough ticket to get you on the air safely from there you will learn all this anyway because it'll all gradually it's like a big mist it gradually clears over time you go oh i understand i mean even to this day i'm still stuck on half of this <laughs> right got another video for you here and well i'll give you a playlist a, a, a surprise underneath but youtube thinks you're gonna like this one all right, in the meantime, have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. All the best. Now.